And we're back. Welcome back. Welcome. This is it. This is A L I C E, the bunker of bunkers, the greatest show on the earth, toilet time TV. We know you guys have been waiting, anxious. Hopefully, you guys have been contemplating about the AI takeover. Hopefully, you guys have been anxious. Yes. Hopefully, you guys are not popping those zannies. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because we do, you do know that there's a correlation between COVID anxiety and the propagation for the pharmaceuticals to make you dependent on anti-anxiety medication. And Tom Cruise, ooh. Mm. The puppet masters are in play. Yeah, Scientology.com. Don't go there. We do, <laughs> we do. Go to Scientology.org. We don't know any of these dot coms. We don't know what's on it. We don't promote it. None of them. Not even Alice.com. Scientology.gov. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't exist. <laughs> Anyways, we want to welcome everybody back. Hope everybody is ready for 2023, the jam packed year. Let's get ready to rumble. We are only seven years away. If you can smell what I'm cooking right now. For the infamous date, Agenda 2030, it is creeping up on us, and I hope everybody is ready for the AI takeover. I am. But anyways, before we get started, we need to flush the infamous A-L-I-C-E toilet. The L-C-A-C-L-U? No, the, toilet? no, if we don't flush the toilet, Alice, she's just going to get angry. So we I just, understand. We just, you know, of course you do. We all just have to do it. Anyways, so we will be flushing the infamous toilet here in three, two, one. Welcome to Toilet Time TV, the greatest show on the earth. Sponsored by Alice herself. One day we will get her on the show, but until that day, we give all thanks to our sponsor. For now, we'll just have to follow the bunny trail. If you guys would like to be sponsored, you can contact us and we will let Alice know because she does all that stuff. And we'll put your products on here. Sponsored by me and my colleague here at Toilet Time Television. But if the FBI contacts you before you contact us, don't contact us. Yeah, because we don't want to be contacted by the contacted. We don't want their package. Well, we just don't want to be double contacted. We don't mind double ham. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> we don't. I'll take a double helping. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind double ham, but I don't want double contact. It's yeah. supposed to be a no contact sport. Well, this is just a no contact area. Yeah. Anyways, hope you guys are ready. Strapped in with the jog strap. You get strapped. We haven't received any photos yet, but if you guys send it in, we will post it. And we are about to get ready and rock and roll. We are going to be discussing things from Roomba, taking pictures of you in the bathroom. Whoa. To whatever is on the highly classified, double-contacted, superficial tab hmm. that my colleague has. Please. It's like a portal to another yeah. dimension. Please. You're embarrassing me. It's the Tesseract tab. Yeah. I'm glizzy-filled and strapped up like the back of a prom gown. Double swole. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Boom. It's Popeye the toilet man. <laughs> he lives in a trash can. <laughs> Please. Please. No pictures. Yeah. I mean, what was that? What was that called? So Green Acres? Green Acres is the toilet for me. But anyways, hope you guys are ready, jam-packed, <laughs> and we are going to proceed. So, what is in your dimensional tab? Well, <clears throat> apparently... I love that word. It just flows right off of my... Exophagus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rocking this metropolis. The glizzards. Hey, so apparently uh, on Amazon right now, you can buy a Holy Spirit board. What? <laughs> <laughs> what 
What is it, a game? Uh, yeah, it's a Ouija board for Christians. So, <laughs> so you could talk to Jesus Christ himself. It's yeah, twenty nine ninety five right now that's, on Amazon. Wow, that looks like Gandalf. Jesus Christ action figure. You know, have you ever, if you ever seen Lord of the Rings, that looks like Gandalf. Yeah, but the um, the planchette is a crux with a little eye hole. Apparently, you can talk directly to Jesus Himself. It's twenty nine ninety five. See that the the price to talk to God is twenty nine ninety five. That's that Peter Popoff stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pied Piper stuff. It's a double edged sword. So let's think about this logically. If God doesn't want you to play with that. And you have to use that to find out if God doesn't want you to play with that. He may punish you for playing with it just to find out if you shouldn't play with it. Yeah, so he'll answer no. You shouldn't be with playing with this. Or he'll actually tell you no on the board, and then he'll and then he'll say, I'm going to punish you now. Yeah, and so it's like, <laughs> I think it's safer just not to play with Prepare it. Prepare to be What amazed. was that ancient thing called? Uh, Samuel. Pascal's Wager. Yeah, and uh, Grunjiger's cat too. But if you read the description of this item, um, you know, in these bullet points, you know, the first bullet point is get the answers you need. The Holy Spirit Boyd can answer all of life's most important questions straight from the man himself. This is, these are making some big claims. You know, this seems like a class action lawsuit coming. Um, this is it's these are claims. It says it's perfect for churches, prayer groups, or just getting together with friends. Unlike other spirit boards, this one will never contact evil ghosts or demons. So you can ask your questions with an assured sense of safety. I think that, you know, and it's eight years and up. So I, I think that's uh, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, but these claims, it's not, does it tell you how to win? <laughs> is it a game or is it just like seeker sensitive? <laughs> We're, we're just sensitive to seeking. Is it literally just a board of sorcery? Someone asked a question, you know, in the question and answer section at the bottom of Amazon the page. It said, is this a joke? This has to be a joke, right? And they answered saying, it's definitely something for sale, so it's not a joke. You can actually buy this thing. It's not a joke. Well, so tell us one more time. Sell it to us, man. Tell us all about the Jesus game. Well, you, you get to use this. What's it uh, called? It's called the Holy Spirit Board. That's all it's called, the Holy Spirit Board. Yeah. And so what does this Holy Spirit Board contain? It contains, there's probably a picture on the screen right now. It contains a uh, board um, with uh, you know letters on it in the shape of an eight. Oh, wow. Like an um, infinity sign. Yeah. Um, that's how the letters are formulated. And then there's a cross with a little eye hole in it as the planchette. Is there any holy water or anything? It doesn't appear to be. It's probably extra. Is there instructions? I'm sure there is. It looks like a pretty legit board game. So what do they say in the description? Uh, let's see. Like we might have to buy okay, so this the, just, <laughs> just to see what it's the, all about. The description says... The Holy Spirit Board is the only spirit board designed to directly contact our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unlike other spirit boards that are often used to contact ghosts and demons, this is a one-way ticket straight to heaven. Try it today and discover a new way to pray. Oh, wow. This is the epitome of Peter Popoff. See, everybody's making a board game. One day we will be coming out with Toilet Time, the board game. But... uh yeah, that's that's interesting. <clears throat> it's Gandalf. You think you're gonna buy one for nope. you and your family? <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, that's 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 quick and fast. I thought about it, but I already know I'm never gonna play it. And it's thirty dollars, twenty nine ninety seven. So, well, we can ask Alice. She has a corporate business card or whatever. Maybe she'll buy one. We can show everybody here live what is the Holy Spirit board. Well, the insider has reported that Roomba is being charged with leaking pictures, intimate pictures, 
of individuals in their own home. It's been going viral this past week that there are leaked pictures of a woman sitting on a toilet, and these pictures have been taken by Roomba vacuums. So now before Mr. Ed and the rest of you guys tried to ban this, saying this is fake news, this has been verified by Roomba themselves. You're going to display the pictures? Yes. Well, I'm not. Of but, the woman on the toilet? <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're, they're available, but they're censored, of course. Alice is going to make sure all that gets propagated, but Roomba themselves has confirmed. So robot maker iRobot confirmed that sensitive images leaked online were, taking, were taken by its devices. So just to clarify also, before Mr. Ed and boys come along, Roomba said the images, including one woman on the toilet, were taken only by test units. The images were leaked by a Venezuelan contractor from Scale AI who worked with iRobot MIT Tech Review reports. Was this woman watching Toilet Time? Well, it looked, like, she, it looked like she was watching something, so it's a good possibility. Well, she was having toilet time. Yeah, but was she watching the show? And was what kind of toilet was it? Was this a makeshift? Or? No, it was a real toilet in a real house. Okay, so it was just a toilet. Yeah, it's good old-fashioned porcelain toilet. Could you tell what brand it was? No, but it was white. Yeah, it's in a dark room. Porcelain. But this is from a test unit, but it shows the capabilities, and it shows the... Uh, not only the capabilities, the ability to leak this type of information. So if these test units can take pictures, clear pictures of you sitting on the toilet. And they can take video. And it can be leaked to the web. That means your current Roomba devices that also have cameras. So it can clearly, or it is, taking photos. And then those photos are stored somewhere. And they clearly can be leaked because this individual sitting out of all the pictures you're going to leak on the web, not the one of somebody sitting on a toilet. That is not the picture you want leaked on the web. So that was not done by Roomba. That is not good PR. None of this is good PR. So clearly what this means is that anybody who owns a Roomba, your pictures are being stored somewhere on the cloud. And they have the ability to be leaked Everywhere, your children, you, it could be when you're in the toilet, it could be when you're taking a shower, it could be you in the bathroom, it could be your children changing, it could be anything that you consider sensitive and private information. iRobot, which is the maker of Roomba, is clearly violating privacy and their infrastructure is clearly vulnerable to being leaked. And so you guys need to take this into consideration. And Roomba, you need to get your act together. And we're doing this as a service to our Patreons and individuals watching. That it's not just the government. It's companies like Roomba that is going to be propagating your naked picture all over the internet. But this is real. So all you fact checkers out there, Mr. Ed and boys, this has been verified by iRobot themselves. They have confirmed. I don't think he cares about stuff like that. I think people like him probably care about like when little boys and girls go missing and they, they just disappear. That's when he'll cover it. Well, a lot of people don't know also that who owns iRobot is Amazon. Amazon just bought them last, I think, August. So this is clearly Amazon's problem. Well, they're always selling spirit boards. Well, it's interesting, the correlation. Amazon also owns another camera company. They bought Ring. But last year, they were saying they're going to make a America Home Funniest video collaboration with MGM Studios, called it like Rang Nation. So they already have an idea of taking sensitive video that they own because it's on their cloud system and making a collaborational video like America's Home Funniest videos with that. So what do you think they're doing with all these pictures that the Roombas are taking? The Roombas are just like your ring. They're taking videos and photographs and storing it on the cloud somewhere. And since Amazon owns both, they have access to both. So this is just more information for you guys to know. AI is constantly monitoring you. Makes me feel safer already. Because then they could, they could tell me if like 
I'm getting, uh, if I'm being watched, they could tell me. Like, they would literally know if I'm being watched by some creep or something. Well, of course they know, but they're not going to tell you anything. They're just going to make Ring Nation. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, I don't know. If someone's out there filming me through my window or something, then they'll see it. Who's that peeking in the window? <laughs> Somebody now. But Amazon will be able to see them looking at me. And then they'll be able to let me know that well, somebody's watching me. Alexa is listening to you. Roomba is filming you and taking pictures while you're on the toilet. Ring is watching your whole house. You are just under the full surveillance of Amazon. And AI is controlling it all. But this is just another example that you are not going to be able to run away from AI. You're going to have to make some decisions. And for the price of convenience, you are going to have to lose some liberties. You're going to have to understand the invasiveness comes along with that convenience. But anyway, just putting it out there so you guys know, Roomba has verified. Their parent company, iRobot, their parent company, Amazon, has verified that they have taken these photos. And they did say it was a test product, but all that does is verify that all their products have this capability and that their infrastructure can be penetrated and these photos can be leaked, which means they are and can do this cur currently if your Roomba has a camera. That's really disturbing. So what else is on Timmy's tab? So some guy uh, in Flint, Michigan, this guy made a machine that pulls water from the air. It's like a dehumidifier pretty much, but it purifies it to where it's purified drinking water. And uh, he woke up the next day to find it sabotaged. Now, who do you think would have done that? Nobody, nobody, no. Yeah, because it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they're trying to figure out. You know, this made, um, you know, the news and all that. Well, we, we can only imagine who would want to break that. I mean, it doesn't hurt anybody except well, the water companies. Yeah. He was doing it for some school, school get-together thing for the kids. Again, it's all about the kids. Um, who, he says that whoever sabotaged this machine, he's over here talking, showing you Whoever sabotaged this machine knew exactly what they were doing. They didn't just like smash and break it. They, they went specifically to specific circuitry and messed with things. So they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. So who would have the biggest gain of this machine being Men destroyed? in black. Or the water companies. Well, yeah, them too. Yeah. That, that's who I think care more. I don't think the government actually cares at all. You're talking about like Aquaman? No, I'm talking about like Pepsi Cola and boys, the all you know, all the uh, Nest Nesty or who Aquafina. Yeah, all I, I yeah. Fiji water, smart water, yeah, dolphin water. Who else would care? Government wouldn't care. Why would they care? Because you're feeding kids, and they don't want you to help kids. They want to take them. I still think that's the corporations. The government wants to Balenciaga our kids. Balenciaga is just another company. Yeah, it's like uh, Vasucci and Baton. I think it's all one big company. Yeah, there's Louis Vuitton, um, Don Perignon. Yeah, I don't know. and I, But all I'm saying is I don't <laughs> think that the government cares. It's either that or somebody. Is, is this guy, uh, question, is this guy a minority? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. Is he a minority? Oh, no. <laughs> See, I'm thinking it's like there, there's always a motive. And some of this stuff is so stupid that it has to have a deeper motive because it just doesn't make sense. I think he's a majority. Is he? Is it, what color is he? He's black. Yeah, see? Who wants a smart black man? Who wants them to be lifted up as somebody innovative? Religious people. Technologically advanced. Somebody who's trying to be a philanthropist. Religious people. They don't want black people to be propagated or any minority for that sake. Okay. See, this is making more sense because I'm sitting there, even the water coming, who cares? They don't care. Government don't care. Nobody cares. But personal vendettas, they care. So maybe some smart person, if they know something to do with these circuitries and very proprietary placements of destruction, 
doesn't like minorities being seen as innovative, intellectual individuals. And they come along and destroy this. Because really, water, I mean, this is so minute. Water companies could absolutely not. Now, unless this is large scale, like he's going to say this is a small scale, we could scale this up and we could basically give free water to everybody. Now, if he's propagating that, then yes, then the water companies do have a foot in that race because he could literally give everybody free water. We need more eracism. Well, that's unfortunate. Anything we can do to become more efficient as a human species, I think we should encourage. I don't know why anybody wants to just be destructive. It has to either be for monetary gain or for nationalistic gain, like white supremacy or some other philosophical nationalistic agenda. What else is on the tab? Well, there's a new book out where Santa has a husband. It's a kid's book. Children's holiday book. I think it's called Santa's Husband. Is it popular? Uh, apparently popular enough. It made uh, CNN news and other news channels. So, Are they against it or just reporting on it? Yeah, so they're, they're promoting it. I don't know if this will rub our CNN employee the wrong way. I know he's working for us now, I'm no longer with CNN. Uh, but CNN is all for this Santa Husband children's book. Are you? I don't know. Um, I don't know yet. I don't know how it makes me feel. Does it rub you the right way? Yes. Has there been any uh, outrage from this? I'm sure there will be. Not on. You're not going to find that on CNN. What do you think about it? Do you think people have a right to be outraged by that? Knowing that the construction of Santa Claus, Santa himself may have been a real person as the individual originally, historically, but the idea that is propagated today is not the same construction as the original Santa himself. And since it's this figment idea, do people literally have a right to be offended by a figment? It's like getting mad that Mickey Mouse may do something weird. Yeah, I don't know. Because, um, you know, everybody got mad when you started talking about Mickey Mouse and Swissin. Well, that, that, that's, uh, that's why I don't know how I feel about the Santa Claus thing. Because although I, I'm all for letting things be that are being, I don't try to change things that aren't broken. <clears throat> um. Santa Claus is a completely made up character. Like there's no history, like real history to back. It's pretty recent. So they could do whatever they want with it. And they created the guy so they could make him whatever they wanted. They could make him have a unicorn where his horn can touch the sky. Well, at least the American derivative is definitely fictitious to the core. So the idea that that's what I'm saying. It's like Mickey Mouse. You know, Mickey Mouse is fictitious to the core. It's a straight up cartoon. But people get offended when Mickey Mouse is seen in a different light than what they're used to seeing traditionally. But is is there any is there justification in that anger, knowing that this thing itself has no will, no choice, no volition? It's not like Mickey Mouse cares because it has no will, and so we're projecting a will onto a figment idea, which is self-projective. It's our ideas, but then. Because it's a figment character, like a cartoon, it can literally accept anybody's projection. It doesn't matter what your proclivity is because it has no individual will. So how does somebody have a right to get mad about something that it itself isn't real? That's a good question. It's, it's kind of strange. I understand why on some point, because people identify with what they traditionally represent with it, but you can't identify it like personally. Like, I can't believe they would do that to Mickey Mouse. It's like, you think Mickey Mouse cares? Well, here's another thing that involves children. It's kind of interesting. There's a purse, and they're not releasing who sells this purse, but this purse is made out of uh, alligator tongue and a child spine. Oh, I think I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, the child spine is actually the handle for the purse. Yeah, I think it was verified that they, that is a real child's spine. And they're sourced from Canada with papers proving that 
Uh, this is actually genuine child spine. Um, yeah, you can buy them from licensed companies. Uh, they refuse, they receive human specimens donated to medicine. Like it's one thing to have castings, you know, like a skeleton is a casting, atomically correct casting of a human, like a skeleton you have in class. But then there can be places where you have a real human that's just the bones are from a deceased individual. But then it's another thing to think you can capitalize on it. Like I can make a whole business off the people who fetishize human body parts. But uh, yeah, I saw that and I thought that was interesting that the two things that have been massively propagated in the last 18 months has been AI's takeover of our civilization. And children. And children, which is really strange. And so I'm not sure what to make of that. I don't know if that's a correlation or what, but that's just an evidence of phenomenon. That is literally what's been happening for the last 18 months. The number one propagative things that are trying to infiltrate into society right now is AI takeover and some kind of weird desensitization of children and the abuses, manipulations, propagation, and profitizing off of children. So I don't know what to make of that, but something's going on. It almost makes me wonder if the children thing has been going on forever and we're just now hearing about it. Well, I'm sure it's always like that. When we hear about something, it's only because people are getting caught. Yeah, I mean, like nowadays you have media, you have cell phones, everybody's got cameras, so nothing is secret anymore. The government tries to delete things and shadow ban stuff they, as best they can, but somehow some things get just, they just slip through the cracks. So things that probably empires have been doing for millennia is just finally becoming known to the public, like all these secrets. Well, certain cultures still embrace those kind of things. And you know what? Each to their own when it comes to their culture. But living in certain places like America and Western civilization, we don't promote child profitization. We actually try to avoid child labor. We try to avoid child sexualization. We try to avoid child abuse, child aggression, because in our minds, children need to be protected. They're not able to make those decisions yet adequately, even if they think they are understanding our amounts of the children, child's brain. We believe they're not at that level where they can make that decision. So we put it on ourselves as adults to take care of them until they can make those decisions. Now, other civilizations may think different, and that's totally fine. That's why they live there, and that's why they have their laws. It's kind of like this, uh, this one woman actually has a hospital change her gender and then she sues the hospital afterwards for doing exactly what she wanted yeah. and uh she tries to claim that she uh she didn't know any better when she was going into it but now she does was she a child i don't think so yeah i mean if it was a child you know what i'm gonna put that on the parent i was like yeah the parent should have uh, thought about it and we shouldn't give children the ability to make those decisions they 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 are still trying to figure things out if you're an adult, you want to do that? Absolutely. And it's all on you and you got no one to blame but yourself. And it's not even a blame thing. If you have a problem with it, then yeah, you got no one to blame but yourself. Whatever happens, you should be happy with it. you're an adult. But as a child, no, I just don't. These kind of things, you can't go backwards. I mean, we have too many people today complaining about they want to go back, but there's some permanent consequences. It's really hard to go backwards. And so this has to be something that's a lifelong commitment and you should not give that access as much as the child may think they know. At least give them the ability to say you can do whatever you want when you get older or when you turn 18 or when you be an adult. But, and I know that could be controversial in many ways. I just think it's the most efficient because I'm looking at the efficiency because you don't want a bunch of complainers. If you let these children, you already know. If you let children do whatever they want, they're going to complain. Oh, I don't like it now. Well, you know what? Some of these things are too bad. Eventually, these children actually die because yeah, they commit suicide or whatever. That or there's health complications. Like they're only 
promised a few more years after this uh, surgery takes place because they always things always happen. Their livers fail, kidneys fail, lungs start collapsing. Things just start happening because your bot you've changed the makeup of your body, so now it's like fighting itself. It's like, wait, I'm supposed to be this, but it's like like this. Uh, almost like you're putting a virus in a computer. It just keeps on going back and forth. It just dies. Yeah, and if that happens to an adult who makes that decision, understanding these risks, that's totally fine. It's just the children. They don't understand that. They And some of them, just they're too young. They cannot understand that. And I don't understand why anybody thinks it's right to give children those kind of rights. And and then you know what? And what's the stupid part about it is, if anything happens to those children, you know who gets blamed? It's the parents. And it's like, we don't even have a right to do anything. You're going to say, well, we just have to do whatever the children wants. But then you're going to blame us when something goes wrong. I was like, that... that if you want to give them the rights, then let the children be blamed for their decisions. But no, it never happens that way. Anything goes wrong. Now the parents are still at fault, even though they had no option in any of these decisions. That's just entrapment. <laughs> That's just wrong. What can you do? What else is on the tab? In the UK, there is a uh, disgusting face competition. So you have to make the most grotesque face that you can. <laughs> it looks like Mac and me. Wow, that's talent. Yeah. And you have to hold it there for as long as you can. And uh, until you ra- you get a uh, reward. Wow, that's... I was thinking something else. I Hey, as stupid as that is, that's actually... That takes some work. Yeah, no, I feel like um, a buddy of ours named Sean would really... Uh, he likes doing those those facial things. If he goes to the UK, he could win some some cold hard cash. Yeah, that reminds me of another thing. You ever seen those Russians? They have that different kind of hand wrestling where they saran wrap each other's hand, <laughs> and then they have to punch each other, and you can't get away because you saran wrapped. And it's on an actual arm wrestling table, and but their hands are saran wrapped like this, and they're sitting there like literally punching and pulling but they can't get away because yeah. the hands are saran wrapped yeah, i've seen something like that and then there's the slapping competitions but then there's a new one where they got the females involved and the females are involved in the slapping competition but they're slapping each other's butts as hard as they can humans will be uh innovative when they get bored on other news there's a really cool guy who takes a bunch of pictures with his uh family um but this his family is uh, like, they're like dolls. What are you talking about? <laughs> like they're like paper mache. And I think he changes their, he changes her face expressions. So like he draws different faces on her and stuff. So basically he considers his <clears throat> family dolls. Yeah. Oh, wow. So he has a wife and a kid and um, they're, he draws faces on them. He needs some assistance. He needs, needs some, some milk. milk. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. He needs some milk. Yeah, but he's serious. Like you can tell, this this guy is OG. Yeah, he, he's gonna he's gonna ride for them. He's he, OG. Some gonna ride and die for those guys. That guy, he needs some help. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. What else you got? This guy got uh, visited by UFOs, and now he has telekinesis. All right, what what can he do? When he puts his hand over, like, brown granules, he can make them vibrate. With his hand? Yeah, like just hovering like this. All these little brown granules start vibrating and jumping. Has anybody proved this by third-party sources? No, but he's asking for help. So he's another person who needs help instead of milk. What kind of help? Maybe we can help him. Yeah, we could. We could reach out to him. Mm -hmm. Hey, guy, reach out to us here at Toilet Time TV. (laughs) My guy. Yeah, we'll we'll try to help you out, my guy. (laughs) Uh, An anti I believe she was in Germany. Um, She actually uh, injected a bunch of, uh, let's see, 8,600 elderly patients with salt water or saline instead of the vaccine. So instead of she's she's an anti yeah instead of giving them the she she made them with salt water 
8,600 elderly patients. First of all, this woman, she knows what she's doing with a needle. Like there's, I don't know if there's anybody with that much experience under the bells. Like how many people have you like poked? Cause you know, whenever I go to the hospital, there's some people you can tell they're inexperienced. Like this is their first, uh, needle job. And you know, there's people that have been doing it for some years, you know, but they're still getting familiarized. This woman is really good with the needle. 8,600 elderly people. How'd they catch her? Somebody probably crept. Yeah, I guess, and then they could attest it and see that they weren't. Yeah. Well, that person put their money where their mouth is. They were an anti and they went all the way. Another little fun fact is um, at the bottom of your globe, you can check it. Anybody who has a globe at their house or at their school, go look underneath, and it'll actually say not for educational purposes and this proves that the earth is flat well is there a flat map that says it's for educational purposes i don't know well then it's not for educational purposes either so there is no earth yeah we can't be educated by anything and we're just living in a bunch of simulations yeah and this is put out by the uh, wtf yeah because you know what's interesting is the flat earth people use those balloons that go up a thousand and hundred twenty thousand feet but that's just a camera which could just be simulated and then nasa tries to send us more videos of them going to the moon in space but those are just videos so which it can be simulated until humans can empirically themselves go they have to believe in some type of simulation because these videos are recording or they're just propagating and so we don't know which one it is. Are they recording reality or are they propagating simulation? That's what I was going to say. Flat earthers. Flat earthers could, could figure out whether the earth is flat by one of two ways. Either they, like you said, they all leave the earth eventually and go live on Mars with Elon and his nose. You know, at least didn't go far enough to see a ball or flat <laughs> or round or whatever. Yeah. The other option, is you can go home, let your, look at your globe. And see if it says for educational purposes. Yeah, I or not. think I have a globe downstairs in the library. I think I'm going to bring it up here next time. Because this is this is undeniable proof. Yeah, but I don't know. I have to ask Alice. She's the one that controls that stuff. Last time I tried to bring something out, she didn't like it. <laughs> she doesn't like anything. I don't think we're ever going to get out of here. Alice's bunker. No, probably not. And what else you got? Uh, some kids got their PS5 stolen. And um, and then the guy who stole their PS5 messaged them through the PS5 saying, uh, this is a, this is a, a joke, bro. You know, you didn't, you don't have any, you don't have any good games on this game. <laughs> and they actually reached out to the original owners and they actually went and told the news apparently about it. Did he get caught? No. Did they get the PS5 back? No. So I guess still has the PS5. It's just he was like, you know, I would think something that expensive. It wouldn't be that ex- it wouldn't be that expensive to put a GPS location device in there. You know, there should be some way to locate your device. This guy literally just walked in their room and walked in their house and yanked the PS5 out of the wall and uh, just walked back out of the house. While people then, are in the house? Yeah. And then later messaged them with it. And nobody them. in the house knew it? No, they apparently they knew it. This oh, kid they just saw them do it? Yeah, this kid is talking about it. And then uh, he went on his account, and uh, the guy was actually messaging him on his PS5 account. <laughs> 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 that guy needs to stand up for his rights. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways... That's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was jam-packed full of goodies. As always, if you guys have if you guys have any specific topics or interests that are interesting to you that you think we should expand on more, we will continue bringing the latest updates of any AI derivatives and we will continue bringing the whatever is on the mysterious Tesseract tab. 
But if you guys have specific things that you guys are interested in, let us know in the comments and we will see if Alice wants to explore those rabbit holes. But until then, here at Toilet Time TV, we wish you greetings. We wish you farewell. And we'll see you guys here at Toilet Time TV next time. Deuces.